All right. Good morning and welcome to Saturday Storytime with Greenlight Bookstore. I'm Jessica from Greenlight and we are excited to host a very cool story time today with Margaret McCartney and Jody Wheeler Toppin presenting their new book, This is a Book to Read with a Worm. So before we start, I just want to say a big thanks to Jody and Margaret for being with us today and for everyone who worked together to make this happen, including the folks at Charles Bridge. And thanks to all of you guys for showing up this morning. Though we're not able to host events in our bookstore spaces, we know that our community of authors and readers is still here, and we're so grateful for your support and for the chance to share story time with you. So a couple of things to know for this morning. In our Zoom webinar today, you can see and hear the speakers, but they can't see and hear you. They can see that you're here, and you can see a count of other people who are here at the top of your Zoom screen. You're welcome to post your comments and your thoughts in the chat. If you click on the little speech balloon, you can see the chat window. That's a great way to let the authors know what you think or answer questions or just let folks know that you're here. If you have a question that you would like for Margaret and Jody to answer, you can post it in the Q&A. That's the one that looks like two speech balloons. So if you click on that, you can put some questions in there. Or when we get to the Q&A part, you can click on the hand raise button and then I'll know that you have a question to ask and I can unmute you so you can ask your question out loud. So we'll remind you about that when we get to the question and answer part, which will be at the very end of the story time. And I want to remind you that our special featured story time book, This is a Book to Read with a Worm, is available for sale from greenlightbookstore.com for shipping or for pickup at our stores. So if you like this book and you like Margaret and Jody and Greenlight and want all of us to be able to keep doing what we're doing, buying today's book is a great way to show your support. As a special bonus, we're offering a 15% discount when you purchase the book this week. So we'll be posting the buy link and the coupon code in the chat. So keep an eye out for that. So just a little introduction, Jody Wheeler Toppin wrote the words for this book. She's actually written more than 15 books for children and teachers, and she used to be a school teacher herself. So her goal in both writing and educating is to present science as exciting, suspenseful, and understandable. She loves having adventures with kids, her own and any others who come her way. And she's joining us this morning from Atlanta. Margaret McCartney is the author, or sorry, is the artist who made the pictures for this book. She's an illustrator. She has designed everything from garden gloves to comic books to her own line of children's wear, but this is her first book, so that's really exciting. Margaret lives here in Brooklyn. She's our neighbor, um, and she reminds us that you can, in fact, find worms in Brooklyn, and Margaret learned something new about worms when her son, Felix, tried to eat one when he was a baby, but he said it was too wiggly. So that was what she learned from him. So as we mentioned at the beginning, Jody and Margaret are here to share their brand new book, This is a Book to Read with a Worm, which is equally entertaining with or without a worm friend and has lots of information activities in it. Jody and Margaret have a really cool presentation about their book and about worms today, so I'm looking forward to learning a lot. Jody is going to start us off, so please take it away, Jody. All right. So I am very excited about my book, This is a Book to Read with a Worm, which I think is showing up backwards, but that's all right. Um, and part of what I'm excited about this morning is that I would like to introduce you to a couple of worm friends that I have brought with me. Um, I'm, I'll start by getting this guy out. Come here, come here, come here. I know, a little bit of stage fright, the worm is coming. This is Captain Underpants, and uh, we're glad to have Captain Underpants with us. I'm gonna give you a better look at Captain Underpants in just a moment. Um, we get out a friend for Captain Underpants. Um, come here. And this one I've decided to call Cinderella. So I have Captain Underpants and Cinderella over here. And I'm going to share my screen so that you can see my video player. So this is a, I've got a little video camera over here where I can show worms and I this is something you should know if you're dealing with worms they dry out very easily and they can't breathe if their skin gets dry so you always want to have a damp paper towel for them to play on and this, these guys are so excited about the damp paper towel that they're trying to get away so all right I'm going to put Captain Underpants here back because he's a little too wild we'll get Cinderella out here now work with me here I need your help I need you to get up your worm finger, okay? Stick out your worm finger. Let's do some exercises and get ready to be a worm. One, two, three. All right, all warmed up here. Now, get back in there. 
sorry, one of the other worms is escaping. Um, we're going to have the worm move, and I want you to see if you can get your worm finger to do exactly what Cinderella is doing here. So try to imitate, get your finger out, see if you can bend it exactly here, exactly the way Cinderella is moving. My finger doesn't make a very good worm. Does yours? I think I've got a thing we could look at that would help us figure out why. Excuse me, Cinderella. Please get back in your stable. Um, why our fingers don't make very good worms. If we could look right inside our hand, we would see bones. And this is my hand model, you can see. And that the fingers right here. And this is the pointer finger. This was my worm finger. And you can see it's got a bone here and it can bend right there. And it can bend right there. And it can bend right there. And it can't bend anywhere else because you can't bend in the middle of a bone. But if I had a skeleton of a worm here, it would look like that. Yeah, they don't have a skeleton. They don't have any bones at all. And I am going to read a little bit from the book about how worms are able to move without having any bones. I think Margaret's going to put up, uh, I, oh, I have to stop sharing for Margaret to do this. I, I'm going to, Margaret's going to put up uh, the page so you can see it better. Your finger doesn't make a very good worm, does it? You have bones in your finger. So it can only bend at the joints where the bones meet up. Worms don't have bones. Their muscles attach to their skin and they can bend at each segment or ring on their body. A worm on the move is constantly changing its shape. One moment its front end looks like a short fat sausage and then it stretches out like a spaghetti noodle. Cinderella was doing a lot of stretching out and not as much short fat sausage today, but that was just her move. If you looked at your worm through a microscope, you would see that each segment has a few thin, stiff bristles called CT. Your worm digs the CT on its front segments into the soil or wet paper towel. The front CT hold on tight while your worm drags the back segments forward. Then it holds on with the back CT so we can push out the front long and thin. And I love this picture and I love what a great job Margaret did drawing something that we can't see on our worms but that we would have to look at under a microscope. And I'm gonna shift now to Margaret and let her talk a little bit about what it was like to do the pictures for this book. Thanks, Jody. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out about this illustration, on the left-hand side, the bigger worm, um, you can see the CT and um, you can see his segments and you can see that he doesn't really have a face and that's how a real worm is. They don't really have faces. And on the right side, you've got sort of the character worm and he has a scarf and glasses, which you would never see in the wild. Real worms don't have those things. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is to show a video of me actually drawing a worm. So give me just a minute. I'm going to pull up that video. I'm going to stop sharing this and pull something else up. And you guys can see how I made the artwork. Okay, can you guys see that? So I've got my um, colored pencils out and I'm starting to um, sketch out the basic shape of the worm. And I try to make the worm kind of twisty and turny in this picture because that's one of the really cool things about worms is they have all these segments and they can move so easily, you know, like Jody was showing us, you know, our, our fingers can't do something that is that smooth and curvy, but um, worms can because they have so many different segments. So I just kind of quickly sketch in the outline. 
And then this is me drawing at hyper super speed, which I really, I can't do it in real life, but um, in this video I can. Um, so I'm sort of filling in part of it and then I'm making it a little bit darker on one side and that's just to make it look a little bit more rounded, like it's got a little bit of a shadow. Um, the other thing is I'll be using a couple of colors because worms are really sort of a combination of colors. They're a little bit brown and sometimes a little bit pink depending on the worm. Some of them are much darker than others. Um, this one I tried to make look as much like the character in the book as possible. There I am with the with my blue pencil, um, putting on his scarf, just like you saw in the last um, picture that we showed. Um, when you're drawing characters for a book, you want to make sure that they have um, certain colors. And um, in this case, this little scarf accessory that you see over and over again, so you know exactly who you're looking at. And the scarf is an important part of this form, so I went ahead and put that in. And then I'm using kind of a second color to. Um, to make the color in here a little bit more complicated and a little bit more like a real worm. And then I take my pencil and I'm drawing all the segments. And this is a great way to kind of make the um, worm look a little bit more 3D. There goes his glasses. That's another important um, character trait that he's got. He's got his little glasses that you see in every picture that the worm appears. And the, the lines here just kind of show you how the worm is moving through space and they're rounded so that he looks a little bit more rounded. I should really practice drawing this fast because I could get a book done really quickly if I drew it this fast. So the next thing I did was um, I started to sketch out some tunnels. This is one of the really fun things about doing this book is that um, worms create all these tunnels in dirt. And I, that was something that I got to draw. And that was a lot of fun. On the end papers, you see this kind of maze of tunnels. And I just uh, made this little texture. And the texture um, kind of represents dirt. And you see me filling them in. And there it is with all of its, all the tunnels that it's dug around it. And then we get this great cinematic view of it. My son Felix is 13 and he was kind enough to edit this video together for me so that I could show it to you all. So thank you Felix for doing that. I really appreciate it. And there's the final drawing. Okay, now we're going to sh share a little bit more of the book. So hold on a second while I swap screens. Just going to take me one second here. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay, so in this part of the book, um, the next um, sort of project that we have is to make a worm hotel. So at this point, you've got some worms that you found in your garden or at the park, and you're ready to make a little home for them. So um, CT don't work well on paper, but they are perfect for crawling through the soil. Give your worm some dirt and let it spend an entire night exploring. Take a clean, clear plastic bottle and have an adult cut away the top. Fill the bottle with soil and leaf bits. Welcome your wiggly friend to Hotel Worm and cover the entire container with aluminum foil to block out the light. Um, Try a bottle from a single serve drink. You'll be able to see more of our tunnels. We love special treats like apple peels and old lettuce. If our dirt is dry, add a few tablespoons of water to keep us comfy. You can even invite three or four friends to spend the night with me. It's a sleepover. 
Make sure you cover the top of the bottle too. Don't worry, we'll have enough oxygen to last the night. We don't need as much air as you do. In the morning, peel back the aluminum foil and check out your worm's tunneling masterpiece. See how far you can trace the tunnels around the bottle. Okay, now we're gonna um, go back to Jody and she's gonna take everybody on a worm hunt. All right, guys. So, for me, the really, I mean, since I've been a kid, the funnest thing about worms is finding them. It's like a treasure hunt. So, I think we should go on a treasure hunt right now, go on a worm safari, got my safari hat, we'll get your safari hat too, we'll get ready to go, and let's go on a worm hunt. I'm gonna need your help, okay? I'm gonna say this rhyme and you're gonna get in with it with me and, and help me find it. We're going on a worm hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. Let's look in my backyard. Oh, well, we didn't find a worm, but we found a clue that worms are nearby. This is actually a pile of worm poop. So, we know there's worms nearby, let's keep looking. We're going on a worm hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. Let's look in the garden. Ooh. Now, this is a red wiggler. It's not a very big worm, but it's a common worm that you'll find around where you have, uh, wherever you have stuff that, that is being broken down, leaves and things that are being decomposed. So that's a pretty common one, but that's not the one we're looking for. Let's go on. Actually, I am so sorry. This is a night crawler, and it is a great worm that lives deep and is used a lot by fisher people. All right, let's keep looking though, and maybe we'll find the red wiggler. <laughs> we're going on a worm hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. Let's look in the compost pile. Here we go. Here is our red wiggler that will do lots of digesting, but there's something else really cool in this picture. Do you see the little yellow thing over there? That is not a big worm. That is a very small worm. That is a worm cocoon, and a baby worm will come out of that cocoon very soon. But we're looking for a big one, so let's keep going. We're going on a worm hunt. We're gonna catch a big one. Let's look in Germany. Ah, here is a funny looking worm that lives all around Europe, around Germany and those countries. And there are some now in the United States too. And they're really funny looking because they're not kind of pinkish brown like we're used to. Some of them are this kind of green yellow color. Some of them are clear and you can see right inside them. But it's not very big. It's kind of cool, but not very big. So let's keep going. We're going on a worm hunt. We're going to catch a big one. Let's look in the Philippines. This is the craziest looking worm that I know of. Wow. It lives in the forest in the Philippines. It is called the fried egg worm. Can you see why that it's got the, looks like it's got fried egg pictures all over it? It's only found, it only was discovered just a few years ago, which tells us that there's probably lots of crazy worms that we haven't ever found before. But this one lives just in a few forests in the Philippines. But it's still not the big one we're looking for. Let's keep going. We're going on a worm hunt. We're going to catch a big one. Let's look in Australia. This is the giant Gypsonland earthworm from Australia. And it, this is a real person with a real worm. It's so big that farmers say they can hear it gurgling under the ground when it crawls. And there's been a lot of attempts right now to try to protect this really cool and really rare earthworm. Now, when you go in your backyard, you are probably not going to find an earthworm this big, or when you go to the park. And if you do, you should call your nearest worm scientist. But we hope you will go out and find some worms, and we hope that you'll get to know your worm 
using some of the activities in this is a book to read with a worm. But in case this isn't a day that you feel like going out and looking for a worm, Margaret has a great idea of a way you can have a worm right in your house. Margaret? Thanks, Jody. Those were amazing worms. I've never seen that fried egg worm before. That was so cool. And the really long one, I hope that I don't encounter that in the park. I'd rather not, but <laughs> that was amazing. Um, so yeah, I thought of this way that you could make a worm at home if you can't get outside for some reason or if it's winter and worms are hard to find. Um, so what you need is a piece of paper and I'm just gonna move my screen a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So this piece of paper has um, a line drawn across the top at about half an inch and another line across the bottom at about an inch and then um, lines in between that you're gonna wanna get an adult to cut with um, a utility knife. Um, you don't wanna cut all the way through the paper, you just wanna go part way through and I'll show you how that looks in just a second. So there's the paper on my cutting mat and my utility knife. And I'll just cut a couple of these so you can see how that works. So you can see that this kind of opens up um, the paper and it kind of folds in an interesting way. So here's one that I um, fully cut. You can see how, how this is starting to bend and make its own little segments. Um, so then you're going to want to take the um, piece of paper and fold the little um, flap on the top and the other one on the bottom and then put a line of glue on the bottom flap so that you can stick it together. Just bring the two sides together there. And just gonna kind of fiddle with it a little bit to make sure it's stuck together. And then the next thing you're gonna need is a couple of skewers. And these have kind of pointy ends on them. See how, that, how nicely that bends now? Um, so the skewers have kind of pointy ends on them so you can make them go through the first little loop here. So you push it through one side and then you push it through the other side. And that's on, you got one side of the worm connected for your kind of little worm puppet. And then you take a skewer and you do the same thing on the back. Just push it through the paper carefully. And then on the other side, and you've got this worm that moves in a super cool way. Um, for this one, I made a little accessory of glasses. So he would be kind of like the character in the book. So I made these teeny tiny glasses for him. And I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue on those so I can attach them to the front of him. Now we know that real worms don't have faces, but in the, in the case of these characters, we are gonna give them, a, we're gonna give them a little pair of glasses just like our character in the book. Okay, so I'm just gonna lower my screen so you can see him and a couple of his friends. So there he is with his glasses on. And I made some other guys too. Let's see, we've got, um, this worm is wearing a little top hat. And this one, this orange guy's got a cape. And then this one, has a little scarf on. So that's a way that you can make a worm at home. Margaret, those are adorable. I can't wait to make some of them myself. Um, today, for anybody who's watching, today was the first time I had seen these worms too, and I just think, I think they're really fun. Um, Jessica, I think that we are ready to, to take questions. Cool. Thank, first, thank you guys so much. That was amazing. I love seeing the real worms and the different kinds of art worms. We do have uh, a, a couple questions to start, but just to remind everyone, if you'd like to ask a question, you can type it 
in the chat or in the little Q&A button. Or if you want to ask your question out loud, just click the raise hand button and I can call on you. I can unmute your audio so you can ask your question for Margaret or Jody out loud. So our first question is from Max or someone in Max's house. And Max asks, can worms jump? Max, that is a very good question. And, and it turns out that I will answer this question very differently than I might have answered it 20 years ago. Most of the worms that live around North America do not do anything that we would call jumping. However, there is a new worm that's, it's an invasive worm that's spreading pretty quickly across the US that is actually called the jumping worm. And those are actually, the worms that I have today are these, these jumping worms because they, uh, that's what I could find in my yard this afternoon or this morning. Um, and, and they're called jumping worms because when they start, they sort of thrash their bodies back and forth in an S shape. And, now, and of course, now I can't get it to do it. It was doing it just a second ago. Um, but they, they get so, they do it so wildly that they actually come off the ground. So it doesn't look anything like the kind of jumping that you or I would do, but they definitely come off the ground because they fla flap their front end and back end back and forth so wildly that they, and they're called jumping worms. If you see a worm doing that, it's one of these jumping worms. Wow, that is so cool. Uh, okay, we have another question from Clementine. Clementine's a story time regular. Hi, Clementine. And Clementine wants to know, how did you make your book without messing up? Hmm. I bet Margaret and I each have an answer to that question. And I will say for my part, I didn't make the book without messing up. I messed up and messed up and messed up. Or and I, and I did it and it was okay, but not great. So then I would rewrite it and it would be a little bit better. And then I would think, oh, you know, I think if I moved this sentence from this part of the book over near the beginning, it would make more sense here. And so I would move it and I would try that out. And oh, that sounds a little bit better. And I did stuff like that over and over and over. And then when I was all done, even though I had read lots and lots of books about worms, I took my book to a worm professional, a, a couple of guys who actually, they study worms, they're scientists and that's what they do. And I had them read my book and they found a couple of things that I just had wrong, just wrong information. And they said, uh, and I'm trying to think, but one of them was that I had the digestive system in the wrong order on one of my pages. And they said, you need to put this part of the digestive system comes before the other part. Um, so gosh, everything you do, you're going to, you're going to mess up while you do it. It's part of doing anything. And Margaret, I bet you've got thing, examples of that too. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Jody. I mean, when you work on the illustrations for a book, you start with um, usually drawing sketches with a pencil. And that's just to give an idea of what the whole page is going to look like. And you have to think about where are the words going to go and where are the pictures going to go and making room for everything. And then you know, I work with somebody called an art director and their job is to kind of look at the drawings that you're doing and, you know, evaluate them and say, is this going to work? Is this going to communicate the right information? Um, and so that person really helped me uh, make sure that my sketches looked good. And then once those look good, then you start to move on to the final art and creating the all the color artwork. But the other person who looked at the drawings was Jody because she's really the expert in science. So she was able to take a look at them and say, these look good, but this one over here is not quite right. And I think that's maybe what she was talking about with the digestive system, because there was one uh, image where a boy is shining a flashlight so that you can actually see the worm's di digestive system. And I think I got things not quite in the right order. And so then she was able to say to me, oh, we got to make sure we get this correct. So that's kind of the process. And, and actually, you're right. That picture we went back and forth on both both to get the art right, but also before we even got to art, or at some point, the, uh, the scientist actually told me that, well, that's fine for some kinds of worms, but lots of worms are different, and I hadn't known that. So we had, we had all kinds of things we had to fix on that page. Yep. Thank you. That's a really good answer. It's good for all of us to remember that it's not, it's not really about not messing up. It's about continuing to get better and better. So that's, that's cool to hear about that process. So Bridget has a question and Bridget asks, where is the best place to find worms in your backyard? 
So here are some places I would start looking. Anywhere that you have leaves that have been sitting on the ground for a while. So if if there is a place where it's kind of foresty and, and the, the leaves fall and nobody rakes them and they kind of stay there, then, then pulling back those leaves and digging right at the surface of the dirt there is a good place to look for worms. Um, if you are in an area that's very dry, you want to find a place that stays kind of damp. That those are the, so, so maybe rolling back a log or looking under a rock, places like that where water may stay for a while. Of course, never stick your fingers under a log or a rock to pull it back. You wanna make sure you have on gloves if you're having to put your fingers somewhere where you can't see them, just because who knows what else might decide it was a good place to hang out under the rock or the log. Um, and also sometimes you can pull out a plant and it brings its roots and those roots have a lot of dirt clumped in it. And there's a certain type of worm, usually they're smaller, but they're also usually native to the United States that, that live in those dirt clumps mixed in with the roots. And so sometimes you can find really cool little bitty worms that are grown up worms, but only about that long in the root balls. Cool, lots of worms to look for. Um, here's another question from Jack. And Jack asks, how many tunnels do worms dig in a day? Jack, that is an excellent question. And I think it's going to be your job to answer it. <laughs> you, <laughs> why don't you get some worms? Why don't you see? And, and part of it is figuring out how to count your tunnels. But if you want to get a worm and keep, and keep it in a jar like we looked at, and count how many tunnels there are, I would love for you to go to my website, onceuponasciencebook.com and, and type in there and send me what you find out because I have no idea. Amazing, even the scientists don't know everything. So you That's right. have to explore yourself. That's right. Um, we have time for a few more questions. So if you wanna type them in or raise your hand, we can take your questions. I have one that I wanted to ask. Because I know, Jody, you're in Atlanta, and the Greenlight Bookstore and Margaret are here in Brooklyn. So I wonder, are there different kinds of worms in Atlanta than there are in Brooklyn? Y yes and no. <laughs> there are lots and lots of worms that are native to North America, and many of them we don't even know a whole lot about. But then there are some worms that have kind of spread over the entire United States that we would probably find here and in Brooklyn and even out in drier places like Arizona would have some of these worms. Um, most of these are invasive, but some of them were invasive like they came 500 years ago. So it's not like, I mean, they're part of our environment now. We wouldn't think of like, oh, this is something we have to get rid of. So, so the big night crawlers, they came from Europe about 500 years ago. The Europeans actually brought them because they knew they were good for farming. Um, and then some of the little red wigglers, those are pretty common across the whole country, but then there's all kinds of ones that don't even have everyday names, that just have scientific names, and they would be some that would be much more up in the Northeast and some much more down here in Georgia. Cool. I think we've gone through all of our questions today. Do you guys have anything else you want to tell us about worms before we go? I'm so glad that there are all these kids with such great questions, and I hope you guys will get out and explore and find out what kind of worms you have near you. Yeah, it was great to see everybody at this, at this uh, reading, and um, thanks so much for being here and letting us share our book and our projects with you. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Jody and Margaret. Um, I've put the link in the chat once more if you want to check out their book. Um, we have a special discount that's good just for this week if you want to buy. This is a book to read with a worm and there's lots more cool activities and information in there. Um, we are going to post the recording of this event on YouTube within the next couple of days. So if you miss anything or if you want to go see Margaret's cool craft again, you can look for it there. Thank you guys so much for coming and have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye. Bye.